What's up everyone? I know a lot of people have asked me and other people in similar roles to the role that I am in, uh, what is a developer advocate or different terms uh, like technical evangelist or developer evangelist or all these different terms? What is that? Because nobody really knows, right? It's one of those really weird uh, terms that people throw out there. And then what do we do? So I wanted to like talk about that in a vloggy style video today, just to kind of talk about my experience in advocacy or evangelism in general. So this is not the kind of thing, like when you're in college, you don't hear about uh, the advocacy roles. If, you're, if you have a computer science degree and you're looking for roles, you probably just hear about software development and you get into this really stereotypical, like a developer is someone who like spends 10 hours a day, just hunched over his computer, just like staring at the screen, not really that social. And there's lots of just kind of preconceived notions of what a developer is in that sense. And a technical evangelist or a developer advocate or whatever title you want to go with really kind of shatters the mold. So for me, when I was coming out of college, I was applying for jobs and I applied at Microsoft and I got turned down twice, one for a software development position and one for a TAM, a technical account manager. And then the recruiter said, hey, we've got this other role that we think you'd be good for based on the things that you said. And that role was a technical evangelist. And uh, anyway, I think like what they kind of saw in me that would fit for that role, I have a natural, pretty social personality, right? So I enjoy uh, hanging out with people. I enjoy having conversations. I enjoy creating videos and that kind of stuff. And I also had like a big interest in just kind of learning and like showing people how to do stuff. And those are the things that they saw in me that, that made them think like, okay, the technical evangelist role for him makes more sense than these other roles than he had applied for. So I started out my career as a technical evangelist. That term is a little outdated at this point. Uh, you'll probably see more developer advocate. Um, I guess that's pretty much the standard one now that, that I would expect you to see. Uh, but for me, I don't really differentiate between the two. I kind of throw them in the same category. But my job at Microsoft uh, was the same as kind of what it is now, is to get out in the community, to engage with people, to kind of raise awareness to the, the things that Microsoft had to offer for developers. Back then, it was a lot different than what Microsoft has to offer now, since they have bought GitHub and NPM and they have VS Code and all this like crazy cool stuff that they're doing. But my job was just to get out there and engage people. So I did a lot of uh, conference talks, a lot of meetup talks, a lot of workshops. I went out and did like guest lectures in classrooms and I started doing YouTube videos and I started doing video content for Microsoft. So it was basically anything and everything as an evangelist that we could do to, to raise awareness to ourselves, like our brands, but our brands specifically associated with Microsoft, especially back then. Like Microsoft wasn't the most exciting company from the, the public, like just average developer. A lot of people thought of Microsoft as this really big, like closed off uh, company and they kind of did their own thing and they were really like private, weren't really engaged in open source. And I think in some ways they didn't really see them as a natural like uh, member of the general community. So uh, that's the kind of stuff that we were looking to change, change hearts and minds is what you'll hear people talk about, change perspectives raise awareness uh, to specifically at that point, it was a lot of like Windows app development. So Windows 8 and Windows 10, encouraging people and teaching people how to build applications on those platforms and use some of the technologies that we had along the way, like Microsoft Azure, our cloud, our as a Microsoft's cloud platform, uh, which is still a big deal today. So anyway, I did that for three years. I did that in South Florida. Uh, Miami area and then in New York City and then transitioned and got back or got into a, reg a regular software development role at FedEx and that's what I did for uh, three years here in Memphis and then I realized like I just really missed doing all of that stuff I wanted to create more videos I wanted to get out and speak at conferences so I found myself doing all of that stuff in my spare time I would pay for myself to go to a conference I would create my YouTube videos and blog articles and stuff and I realized like as, as part of my just like social, uh, social personality and my teaching personality, that's what I wanted to get back into doing full time. And that's why I started looking for roles back in I guess, November or October of last year. And I got the role at Auth0 and now I get to do, like I said, basically the same kind of stuff. Uh, we're getting really into video content. We're in the middle of COVID now. We're not traveling for conferences. There are 
Some conferences that are online, those have actually gone really well, surprisingly, maybe not surprisingly. They've been really smooth. I've actually really enjoyed them, but it's not quite the same as like being there in person, right? Like going out to dinner, having a beer with your friends or whatever you drink, if anything. Um, so that's, it's kind of a, a thing that we're missing, but with that, we're getting much more into video content. So just kind of what it is like for me on a daily basis. Now, a lot of what I do is uh, video related. I've gotten into streaming on Twitch. So I'm doing that once or twice a week. One of them at least is pretty informal. Just me kind of hacking around on something. One of them is more formal where I have maybe a guest come on and join me and we work through something together or talk through something together. So been doing more of that. Uh, we're really about to ramp up production for the Auth Zero YouTube channel. So check out youtube.com slash Auth Zero. Uh, definitely go and check that out because we're going to be doing much more content there that I'm really excited about. Uh, and that's why like this role fits me so well is I'm already doing video content. Now I get to do more of it for work. I get to get better. Like if I learn something at home or I learn something at work, which is the same thing working from home. But if I learn something on either end, now I get to use that knowledge to help myself out on the other end. So it's really like, it's exactly what I want to do. So lots of video content, lots of streams. Haven't done much writing yet, but that is uh, something that we can do as well is uh, just writing blog posts. We've got a pretty big uh, blog ourselves. Um, so in theory, I will be doing some blog posts on the All Zero channel as well. Other kind of miscellaneous activities, like anything that j can just kind of get our name out there. Um, we sponsor podcasts. So the Thunder Nerds podcast, shout out to Thunder Nerds. You can check them out on YouTube uh, and on your podcast listener app, whatever that is. Uh, I was on theirs uh, the other day, uh, a couple of days ago, actually. And All Zero is a sponsor there. There's a live stream from Jason Langsdorf of Netlify. We have started to sponsor that just to get our name associated with like his brand, which is so big and so impactful. Like people, and including myself, love Jason Langsdorf. He seems like, I don't know him personally, but a great personality. And his content is just uh, really top notch, super, super smart. Uh, and he's kind of the epitome of like any company would love to have him as a developer advocate because like that just brings in all of these people that are aware of him and his work brings that association with the company that he works for right now it's Netlify but whoever he ends up working for and that's kind of the goal with All Zero as well like as if I were to grow a super super big following um, that's going to be associated with All Zero because I represent All Zero all the time basically so anyway, um, so being on podcasts, uh, being on a live stream, like as a guest for someone else, um, tapping into like other people's networks as well. One of the cool things about being in DevRel is like developer relations, by the way, is like the shorthand. DevRel is the shorthand for developer relations. That's where your like advocate titles kind of fall under. That's usually the name of the team. And uh, the good thing is, the cool thing is like DevRel people, advocates at different companies, we all have similar goals. So in some ways, like we get to just kind of like hang out during the day and like cross promote and like learn about each other's technologies, push things um, out to each other's audiences or like reach other each other's audiences by doing things together. So I think some of the skills maybe that are really useful in developer relations and dev and dev realm, I think you have to have a, a social personality to a certain extent. extent. You have to... You have to be comfortable like going to a conference, right? And speaking one, but then also having conversations with people. Like that's a really valuable part of the conference is not just you giving the talk, but also having interactions with the people that are there, the other speakers, the other attendees, that sort of stuff that goes a long way. Um, I, a lot of people would actually say they wouldn't consider themselves to be extroverts. That's really interesting. I wouldn't rule yourself out if you consider yourself an extrovert because um, it all it all kind of affects people differently. I am very much extroverted, especially when I'm around people I know and people I have a connection with. If I'm around people that I don't really know and I don't really have anything to talk about, I kind of shut down. Like I don't really like small talk. I don't like I just rather not talk honestly than do small talk. So I've got this mix, but naturally I'm pretty extroverted, but lots of people on my team and then in general uh, consider themselves to be uh, pretty introverted. So don't really rule yourself out um, just because of that. But I think a big part of DevRel is like social, like working with people, but then also like teaching people. So the creating content, the answering questions, taking feedback from people, that's a big part of our job as well is if people use Auth0 as a platform and they have a good or a bad experience, 
We want to know that. And since DevRel developer advocates are the people, hopefully that the community are engaging with the most, hopefully we can get that feedback and we can send that on to product teams and we can continue to make our products better and better. So there's creating content. There's like teaching people how to use it, teaching people things in general. And then also kind of the opposite of that is taking in feedback, learning from the community, one about what topics and things they care for, but specifics, especially to our platform. Did you enjoy it? Did you not? What did you stumble on? What are, where are our docs lacking? Like, what are we missing? What are we not thinking about? All that feedback is super, super helpful for uh, product teams to be able to like, uh build build their products around right like you build products for customers and community and people that are actually going to use it so you want to know as much as you can about their perspective and whether they think it's good or not so i think at the end of the day in developer relations and technical evangelism as a developer advocate as a technical evangelist your goal is my goal this is my interpretation of it is to be a genuine member of community to participate in things that people in the community are doing. A lot of it is on Twitter, oddly enough. Uh, going to conferences, being involved in meetups, being in Discord servers, that kind of stuff. Just being involved, just being there. Earning trust from people, showing them that you create value to them in content or um, advice or whatever it is, right? You have something that you give back to the community. And hopefully that leads to like an association with your company, whatever company you work for and represent, like you're representing them. So if you earn people's trust and they believe in you and the content they, th that you create and they trust you, that then gets associated with, in my case, all zero, but the company that you work for. So it's, it's one of these interesting roles where people hear about this role and they don't really know what to do with it or don't really understand what it is. And the, the uh, misconception is like, we just sit around and like stream all day and like, I don't get a lot done, but it's actually like a lot of different things that get involved um, in this role. And, and you kind of have to appreciate um, learning new, like getting into streaming, like learning about streaming and the, and the details about streaming and, and creating more videos. There's lots of learning that aren't just programming, right? There's lots more to it. So I, that's one of the reasons that it interests me. Like I get to keep my social interactions. I get to engage with people. I get to teach people. And at the end of the day, I get to help. That's what really drives me is being able to help people. So for me coming out of getting out of evangelism into regular software development, back into advocacy now, it's exactly what I wanted. I needed a couple of years to do full-time development. And then I just wanted to get back into this type of role where I get to be social and I get to work with people and that sort of stuff. So if you're in college and you're looking for a job, if you're going through a boot camp and you're looking for a job, just know that there's a lot more than just your software developer, right? There's tons of different types of roles from developer advocate to uh, UI, UX, uh, to just design, to front end, to back end, to databases. There's tons of different like niches and places that you can get into. So spend some time thinking about what kind of activities you enjoy most and then go and run with those, go and do that. And uh, try to make your job as much about the things that you enjoy doing as possible. Like I said, I'm very lucky and fortunate to be doing the things that I enjoy uh, in my personal time, but also full time for the role that I'm in. So anyway, that is what uh, a lot of my thoughts about uh, what it's like to be in DevRel, what those activities look like, what you might can expect, but just know these are different, obviously, uh, wherever you work. But I think hopefully that's a good high, high level. If you have any more questions about specifics, about being a developer advocate, leave them in the chat and I'll be happy to answer them. Meanwhile, uh, thanks again for checking out the video and I'll catch you in the next one.